everyone. In this session, we are going to talk about what are big objects in Salesforce. Firstly, uh, we'll see what are objects in Salesforce. Then we'll see what are the different types of objects available in Salesforce. Then we'll discuss more about big objects and then we'll see the differences. And at the end, we'll see a, a demo of how to create a big object in Salesforce. So let's start. So firstly, let's discuss what are objects in Salesforce. So if you have used any other application of Java, uh, so objects basically are equivalent to database tables uh, that we create for other languages. Uh, so let's say we have different uh, standard objects in Salesforce, account, contact, leads. So they are the name of a database table and the call. Uh, then we create fields in Salesforce. Those fields are equivalent to table columns. So uh, objects are database tables that allow us to store specific data to the organization in Salesforce, right? And what are the different type of objects in Salesforce? Uh, we have standard objects, we have custom objects. So standard means uh, that have been already created by Salesforce for us to use. Uh, custom objects are those which we create on our own using UI or metadata API. Uh, then the third type of object is an external object. External objects are similar to custom objects, but external objects data are stored outside of the Salesforce organization. So perhaps we don't want the data to be stored on premises. Uh, let's say we want it to be stored in our ERP system. And instead of copying the data into our org, we can use external objects to access the data in real time using web service callouts. So, or we can use uh, Salesforce connect to access the external data. Then we have another type of an object that is a big object. So uh, a big object stores massive and massive amount of data in the Salesforce platform. Uh, the standard uh, audit trail uh, that, that is provided by Salesforce is basically a big object where all the history of uh, uh, all the users are stored, whatever operations they have performed. So let's say we want to store millions and millions of data. Uh, so that is not possible by standard uh, objects or custom objects. Then we'll have to create a big object. So the performance that is being provided by uh, a big object is consistent, whether you have 1 million records, 100 million, or even 1 billion. And uh, the big object can be scaled uh, very easily and uh, cheaply. Uh, that is more of an infrastructure side that we don't have to worry about. So. Uh, what are the differences between big objects and other objects? So big objects uses a horizontally scalable distributed system. So uh, an S object uses a relational database. So firstly, let's discuss uh, what are relational and non-relational database. So uh, the standard and the custom objects are based on relational database and the big object is based on non-relational database. So relation, uh, relational database are those databases where data is stored in the form of tables that is rows and columns and uh, we have a primary key for a column to uniquely identify that column uh, we'll have we have uh, no, we use normalization uh, we normalize the data uh, but in the case of non-relational database let's say we want to store millions and millions of records uh, let's say video files text files and there is not uh, they don't have a proper structure so at that time we will use a non-relational database uh, non-relational database are easily scalable uh, as opposed to relational databases so uh, another property of non-relational database is uh, they are non-transactional and uh, relational database are transactional that means the relational database follows the asset property asset property is atomicity consistency uh, isolate and durability so uh, that property is being followed by uh, the relational database but that is not followed by the big objects and uh, let's say if we have uh, millions and billions of records we'll have to use big object so uh, there are many different types of non-relational databases uh, but that is part of the infrastructure that uh, as a salesforce developer we don't have to worry about so uh, when to use big objects so uh, Salesforce recommends if uh, for a specific object, there would be more than 20 million rows or records, and that will go for far more than 20 million uh, rows, then you can go for a big object. Uh, we know big object uses a, utilizes a non-relational database at the backend to store data. Uh, let's say you want to analyze those big data with operational reports or tableau CRM. Uh, 
uh, WCRM was previously known as Einstein Analytics. We want to find some patterns or we want to analyze the data. Uh, then we can uh, using WCRM, then we can uh, uh, create a big object. So let's discuss some important points about big objects. So big objects supports only object and field level permissions, not the regular and standard sharing rules. So as there would be millions and millions of records, uh, features like triggers, flows, processes, uh, and the Salesforce mobile app aren't supported on big object. So uh, the, uh, the prefix of a big object is underscore underscore B. So uh, for custom object, it's underscore underscore C, right? Uh, audit trail, uh, as we as I said, uh, which is being used by Salesforce for all the history tracking is uh, a standard big object that is provided to us by Salesforce. The API name is field history archive. We can create up to 100 big objects per org and the limit uh, for big object fields are similar to the limits on custom objects uh, depending on our org's license type. So uh, how we can query the big objects? Uh, so let's say even if uh, we have stored billions of data, we need something to analyze the data, right? So we can use the standard SQL query. So if we use the standard SQL query, there are some operators that are not supported for that. Let's say this not equal to like, not in, excludes and includes. These type of operations are not supported for a big object query. So, uh, and only indexed fields can be used in a SQL query. So I'll show you how we can, uh, I'll show you how uh, I already created big object where uh, we have created some fields and uh, we have created an index. So for a standard SQL query, uh, we can only use the index fields. So let's, uh, we are talking about this customer interaction big object. Uh, we can see the prefix is underscore underscore B and these are the fields for that. The fields have been indexed and uh, we have provided uh, some conditions for that in the where clause. So we'll see that when we go to the demo. Now we also have, uh, we can also use async SQL for big objects. So async SQL is a method for running SQL queries when you can't uh, wait for immediate results. So if you don't want immediate results and you want uh, those queries to run in the background and then return some data uh, after some time, so then we can use async SQL for that. Uh, since uh, the records would be in millions and billions, so we can use AC async SQL is available for big objects. Async SQL is implemented as a RESTful API that enables us to run queries in the familiar, uh, familiar syntax of SQL. Because of its asynchronous operation, we can use subset, join and create more complex queries and that are not subject, subject to timeout limits. The situation is ideal when uh, you have we have millions or billions of records and need more performant processing than possible using synchronous SQL. The results of each query are deposited into an object we specify, uh, which can be a standard object, custom object or big object. Uh, this thing I'll show you uh, in the request, which uh, we I'll show you how we can make a request. But the one thing is that async SQL is only included with, only with the licensing of additional big object query, uh, capacity. So we can't make a async SQL query uh, in our developer edition or, but still I'll show you the request and I'll show you the method, how we can make a async call uh, SQL request for big objects. So let's start. I'll just, I'll firstly search for big objects uh, in the setup. Uh, so type big objects in the quick find and click on big objects big object with the name as customer interactions so it will store uh, let's say whenever a customer interacted with a game so it will store all those interactions then since it could have uh, millions and millions of data so we'll uh, the use case was to create a big object then we have uh, created uh, some custom fields uh, for this big object uh, so we want to associate with an account. So we have created a lookup of our account. Uh, we have uh, created a date field, date time field that will store the date time of that interaction. Uh, then we have some other custom fields and we have uh, already also created this game platform field. Uh, then we have created this custom index. So uh, uh, if we haven't already created one custom index, a new button would have been appeared here. So let's just click on view. So uh, we have used uh, this uh, custom fields. Uh, so only those custom fields which we mark as required while creation will, uh, will only be available to create an index. 
uh, we have to provide the sort direction for that index. So let's say for account, we want uh, it to be sorted uh, using descending order and uh, for play date and for game platform, we want it to be sorted using ascending order. So let's go back uh, to the object and uh, after creating this big object and this uh, custom fields uh, we'll have to change the deployment status to deploy it so uh, like uh, by default it is in development so let's make a synchronous query call and we can only use these fields which we have indexed using our indexed related list so i have this query already written uh, i'll just query that and uh, copy that and go to developer console and then we'll make a query to our uh, big object. Let's click on execute. Yes, we have got our results. So now let's say I use a, uh, another field that is not indexed and I want to query this field. Uh, so I can't apply the where clause uh, for this field. So I'll show you. So we have this uh, other query. I'll just, uh, let's, let me go to this and let me apply this where in-game purchases, let's say, a, two, three, four, and uh, let me change it here and let me click on execute. So I get this error uh, in game purchase cannot be filtered in a query call since this is not indexed. Uh, right. So uh, now let I'll show you how to make a async call, async socle call. For that, uh, we have to make a post request. So I'll go to workbench and uh, I'll log in to workbench. Work, we can use Workbench to make uh, many type of calls and it is a really helpful tool. Uh, if When you have logged into Workbench, just click on REST Explorer. In the REST Explorer, uh, we can make a GET, POST, PUT, PATCH request and I'll just query the URL. Uh, so for an async uh, query, the URL should be slash services slash data slash version slash async queries. Now we have the body. I'll just query the body, copy the body here. So now let's see the body. So uh, initially we have this uh, query uh, where we are querying the customer interaction underscore underscore B and we have provided this filter. So for uh, an async query, we can uh, use any type of operators. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, the same as we did in the synchronous circle. Uh, we have to provide in the operation so our operation is insert. Uh, so uh, uh, now you would think where we are inserting. So we have created this target object. So whatever results that are being returned uh, by this query are stored in a target object. So we have already created this target object. I'll show you, I'll go to my Salesforce org and I'll show you. So uh, we go to objects. So this is a custom object. So the name is customer interaction and uh, here are its fields so let's see now we have this uh, target object and then we have uh, the target field map the target field map is like uh, uh, the fields of the big objects are mapped to which fields of the target object so we want the account lookup of the big object to be mapped to the account lookup of the target object then we have this in-game purchase underscore underscore C. You can see that we have also we also have this in the query. We want it to map to purchase underscore underscore C feed of the uh, the custom object which we have created where data will be stored. So this is the field text field, and uh, we then we have this target value map. Uh, so we want to store the job ID to this uh, background operation lookup underscore underscore C. So this is a text field which I have created and. Uh, we want the description to be stored in this description field. So uh, as I already told uh, in a developer edition or we won't be able to use async queries. Uh, I'll show you why. So if I click on execute, so it is uh, Salesforce is giving this uh, error that this feature is not currently enabled in for this type of user type or org. So since we have a developer edition org, so this async socle is not enabled. So this is only enabled for additional big objects license type. So we need to purchase a license and then only it will be enabled. So, but uh, I showed you a sample. So if you have those uh, licenses available in your org, you can do that. So, and this is how you do async socle for big objects. So hope you were able to understand the concept of big objects and uh, 
uh, do like and subscribe the channel uh, for more such videos. So thanks everyone for watching this video. Have a